Okay, uh, so let us continue the discussion on uh, place to supply. Section 12 we were discussing. Which deals with determination of place of supply in case the location of supplier as well as the location of recipient of services both are in India. This is what we have been discussing. If you remember in the last lecture, our last service was related to telecommunication, which was a lengthy, a lengthy provisions to be discussed. That was section 12, subsection 11 of the IGST Act. Now let me cover my remaining services of section 12 so that we are over with the concept of section 12 so that in the next lecture we can start from section 13, which deals with determination of place of supply if the supplies are international. What do I mean by international? Where either the location of supplier is outside India or location of recipient is outside India. That becomes international supply. It is similar to goods also. When you import. So when I import, purchaser is in India and seller is outside India. It becomes international when it, when it is about goods. Similarly, when you export the goods, so seller is in India, purchaser outside India, it also becomes international. Now same provisions will be applicable. Provisions means not the place of supply. Provisions means what is international. In case of international supply of goods, in case of international supply of goods, in case of import, purchaser is in India, seller outside India. In case of export, seller is in India, purchaser outside India. Now, on the similar lines, I can say that when I will talk about international supply of services, international supply of services, one person must be outside India, like either location of supplier is outside India or location of recipient outside India. So on this basis, I can say that these are similar. Of course, provisions will be totally different. So let us first wind up the remaining services of Section 12. So let me share with you the IGST Act again now. I hope it is clearly visible to you. And uh, in the last lecture, if you remember, I discussed with you in detail the determination of place of supply of telecommunication services. Now let me discuss with you subsection 12 of section 12. Banking services. We avail so many financial services. So this is determined as per section 12, subsection 12. And the rule says, or the provision says the place of supply of banking and other financial services, including stock broking services, like share purchase, etc., to any person shall be the location of the recipient of service on the records of the supplier. So when you are availing any banking services, now what banking services you avail? Do you remember any banking service? A simple example is if you want to go, if, if you want to have a DD demand draft for, from your bank. Bank will charge some amount. It's service charge on which GST will be applicable. So this is banking service. When you withdraw. When you withdraw any amount from ATM. When you withdraw any amount from bank ATM. After some transactions, if you withdraw, bank will charge, the ATM will charge some services. It's nothing but a service on which GST is applicable. So I'm concerned about those provisions. That when you deal with banking or financial services, how will you determine the place of supply? So what the provision is? I hope the screen is still visible. The place of supply of banking and other financial services, including stock broking services to any person, shall be the location of the recipient of services on the records of the supplier. So first check, is the location of recipient available in the records of the supplier? If yes, then that location of recipient becomes the place of supply. And in case recipient of location is not available in the records of the supplier, then of course 
what option I have? Only one option. Check the location of supplier then. Provided that, provided means exception. If the location of recipient of services is not on the records of the supplier, the place of supply shall be the location of supplier. So let me start simplifying section 12, subsection 12. So let me share with you now my notepad. So let me simplify the provision with the help of some examples. OK, it is taking some time in opening, so please wait a second. It's taking some time in opening the file. So that is my 10th supply. Banking services related to banking and financial services. Now make sure that when we discuss section 12 in this, it is sure that supplier as well as recipient both are in India. This point you must not forget in any case. When these both the people are in India, then only when be, both these person are in India, then only I apply the provisions of section 12, otherwise not. So when I'm saying that banking and financial services by default, the supplier is in India as well as recipient. Now what is the rule? What is the place of supply in this case? The place of supply is check. If location of recipient is available in the records of the supplier, If location of recipient is available in the records of the supplier, then what is the place of supply? Location of recipient is the place of supply. If location of recipient is not available in the records of the supplier, then what is the place of the supply? Then location of supplier is the place of supply. So let me give you a simple example. Like Mr. Naveen is having saving account in SBI SRCC branch. For example, Naveen is having SBI SRCC branch. Now, when he was in 
Punjab for some work, for example. He went to Punjab. He withdraw some amount from the ATM. He withdrew some amount from SBI's ATM in Amritsar, for example. Now what happened? Now, if you remember from ATM withdrawal up to some transactions, we can withdraw freely. After this, there is service charge liable. Now, after exhausting the limits of free withdrawal, after exhausting the limits of free withdrawal, after exhausting the limits of free withdrawal, service charge was levied. Now the question arises, for example, if service charge levied was, for example, 20 rupees, it's nothing but a service. On 20 rupees, there must be some amount of GST also, including GST. Of course, it's also a service. So the question arises on this 20 rupees, what is the place of supply? Can you tell me what is the place of supply logically? It's a banking service, so the place of supply will be determined as per this rule. Now, can you tell me the place of supply? Which government will get the revenue? Can you tell me the place of supply? I'm waiting for your answer. Sir, Delhi. Delhi, bye. Sir, I think it should be uh, Punjab because uh, the location of recipient is Punjab right now. No, and no, 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 no. You are not concerned with Sir, the recipient. I, I always say that don't be concerned with the location of the recipient, actual location. I am concerned with the location which is in the records of the supplier. Don't concern with the actual location. Actual con uh, location hardly matters. Now, Navin is having a residential address of Delhi. So, in the records of SBI SRCC, the recipient's address location is Delhi. Delhi becomes the place of supply. Point clear or not? I'm not concerned about where SBI is located. Fortunately, SBI SRCC is also in Delhi, but I'm not concerned about this Delhi. No, I'm concerned about the address of the recipient of service. If Navin has given Haryana's address, if Naveen has given Haryana's address, the place of supply would have become Haryana. Because we are concerned in this case, when you have bank account, by default in bank accounts, the supplier for the bank must be having your address. So check that address. If the address is of Haryana, Haryana becomes the place of supply. If the address is of Delhi, Delhi becomes the place of supply. But note in any case, Punjab in my example. I hope the point is clear. If yes, Please raise your hand. If the concept is clear, please raise your hand. OK, very good. Now next example. Again, you should also try to answer this example also. Now example two. Another example, okay. Now Mr. X. He lives in Imphal, Manipur. And he has come to Noida, UP. He has come to Noida, UP. For example, he took some admission in any college in Noida. He took admission in any 
college in Noida, and the college is asking for demand draft. So Mr. X, who is in Infall, went to Noida UP and uh, in bank account of PNB, Punjab National Bank. And he asked a DD of rupees 70,000 for which suppose PNB is asking for charge of 300 rupees. Now this 300 is a service. 70,000 is not a service. It's money transaction. 300 is a service on which there will be some GST. Now, this Mr. X does not have any account in PNB because he was new to Noida UP. In this case, my question is, can you tell me the place of supply? Because it's a banking service. Can you tell me the place of supply? Any answer? Any answer? What is the place of supply? Uh, sir, it should be Imphal in Manipur. Why? Uh, because like it is his uh, address in the books of supplier. No, because no, no, no. PNB doesn't have the address of Mr. X because Mr. X does not have the account. So in the records of PNB, there is no address of Mr. X. It's, it, it, uh, it was a case of normal uh, demand of transaction. Anyone can go in any bank and pay the amount and can have the DD. Uh, that Mr. X case can, is Mr. the X location of supplier, Mr. that is Mr. PNB. X can give any address. PNB doesn't verify that address. Do you know this? Do you know this point that you can make when you go and make the DD or request for DD, you can write any address. Bank doesn't verify that address. Do you know this? No, sir. OK, so you can write any address. So in the records of PNB, there is no address of Mr. X. Clear? And that is why the location of supplier becomes the answer. So the place of supply will be what? Uttar Pradesh. Please raise your hand if the concept is clear. Now you can understand that. The, uh, understand the relevance of this place of supply. It helps in clearing any confusion as far as GST revenue collection by states is concerned. Because of this, this concept of place of supply, there is no argument amongst the states because it's clear. It will clearly tell you which state will get the revenue. Very good. So this point is also clear. So let me go to my next service insurance services. So many times we have our insurance policies. So next service. Insurance service. It is nothing but section 1213. This is the serial number. This is section number insurance service. So coincidentally, you have 11th number, 12th number, 13th number. It's only on a lighter note. Otherwise, it has no relevance. Now let me show you the act. When you have your insurance policy from whether life insurance policy, general insurance policy, General insurance policy includes fire insurance policy, car insurance policy, any insurance service. Now, what is the rule of determining the place of supply? So let me show you the act. Make sure to refer original act always. Don't fall into the trap of only books or notes. It will make sure that your mind stops working in this direction. If you do not think in terms of original items, then you are not reading the exact exact provision. So books will help you, of course, but these can never substitute the act or original court rulings, original notification. That is why I repeatedly, I am repeatedly showing you the 
act so that you become you become comfortable when you refer the act any act not only this gst act after reading the gst act i'm sure that you can read any act whether related to commerce or not because legal language is more or less same now let me show you the act again now this is insurance service the place of supply of insurance services shall now it depends on whether the recipient is a registered person or unregistered person close a the place of supply of insurance services shall to a registered person if the recipient is a registered person for example if tata industries goes for insurance fire insurance from uh, uh, from sbi general insurance for example if tata motors limited purchases a fire insurance of uh, 10 crore rupees from sbi general insurance then what is the place of supply b the location of such person then i am concerned with the location of the registered person now for example uh, i i will give you this example after uh, reading the provisions of the act close b let us first uh, finish reading the act to a person other than a registered person if any unregistered person takes insurance policy for example if i take insurance policy for my car then what is the place of supply then the answer is location of the recipient on the records of the supplier of services now again let me share with you my notepad and let me assume some examples for you so one thing is sure that in case of insurance service the answer depends upon who or what is the status of this recipient is the recipient registered or unregistered so in this case it depends whether registered recipient or unregistered recipient if registered then the place of supply is location of recipient if unregistered then location of recipient does not matter what is actually the location i have still not shown it to you i will show you after winding up section 12 now if unregistered then location of recipient again sorry not location address of the recipient you can say address of the recipient i can also call it as location doesn't matter but in the records address of the location of the recipient in the records of the supplier in the records of supplier in first case when the recipient is registered i am simply using the word location of recipient i am not saying address or location in the records of the supplier records of the supplier doesn't matter whatever is the address given in the registration certificate location of recipient is that whatever is mentioned in the registration certificate that is the location whatever address supplier writes in his or her records it doesn't matter as far as recipient himself or itself is registered if recipient is unregistered then of course there is no location as such there is no identity of this unregistered person then the address or location which is in the supplier's record first let us uh, complete some examples and then i will discuss in case we have any doubt now this is my first example for example there is a company x limited registered registered in west bengal purchases a fire insurance for its go down which is in gurugram for its go down which is in gurugram haryana
and uh, this policy is taken from SBI Journal. This policy is taken from State Bank of India General Insurance Policy. OK, this is the SBI separate grant General Insurance Policy. Can you tell me the place of supply? For example, if this insurance is taken for 3 crore rupees, there will be of course some GST in, on this 3 crore rupees. Now my question is, what is the place of supply? Any answer? What is the place of supply? Any answer? What is the place of supply? Now as we general insurance policy is registered in Mumbai Maharashtra, for example. These all are hypothetical points. What is the place of supply? So there are three states, West Bengal, so West Bengal. Yana, what is the place of supply? West Bengal, sir. West Bengal, any other answer? Any other answer? Any other answer? West Bengal is the correct answer. Why? Because the recipient is registered, so it does not matter for which office this registered recipient is taking the insurance policy. Answer always remain same if the recipient is West Bengal. Very good. Correct answer. Example two. Mr. B. Who lives in New Delhi. And his uh, native place is. His native place. Is Ranchi Jharkhand. For example, Ranchi Jharkhand. And uh, when he was in Ranchi, Ranchi for some work. He took a life insurance policy. A life insurance policy. From. LIC. And gave. Ranchi's address, not Delhi's address, gave Ranchi's address. Now LIC, for example, is registered in Mumbai, Maharashtra. Can you tell me the place of supply now? Because it's also an insurance service. What is the place of supply? Any answer? Ranchi. So is B registered? No, Mr. B is unregistered. Then Rachi. Sir, Rachi. Very good. Jharkhand is the place of supply. I should not write the name of cities because state matters. Yeah, you can write Rachi Jharkhand, but technically Jharkhand is the place of supply. I hope the point is clear. If the recipient is unregistered, simply check what address supplier has in its record for this recipient. So LIC, which is the supplier, has Rachi's address of the recipient. So Rachi becomes the place of supply. Now last specified service, advertisement services to government of India or government of states. Last. There is no example of this. It's very simple. Advertisement services to the government. When government needs advertisement. Beti bachao, beti padao. It's a slogan. Then stop smoking because it causes cancer. It's advertisement. In election times, election commission gives the advertisement that. Young. Male oblique, female oblique. Others should come forward and register for. Their voter ID cards. You also must have seen these things. Such notices when elections are around the corner, corner because you are also of this age. When 
the election commission will approach you that have voter ID cards and go and vote. Now these are what advertisement services to the government of India. In case of polio, whenever vaccination comes, government of India gives ads that polio revivar on Sunday, polio Sunday, polio revivar in the different newspapers. It's also what advice. So this newspaper is giving advertisement services to the government. So government is not giving advertisement service. My section 12 subsection 14 does not cover those cases where government is giving advertisement. It's a case where government takes advertisement. So some other person is giving advertisement service. And. Uh, so many times this advertise, advertisement co uh, crosses different states. Now it is not so easy to uh, compute this advertisement service place of supply because if newspaper goes across the India, across the nation, then the advertisement has covered different states. Similarly, if on television on any channel music show news channel if government gives any ad it covers entire india so it's not so simple to determine the place of supply if you think logically for example any movie is coming on uh, star plus any movie is coming on new on a channel star plus and government of india has given any ad of 10 seconds on that channel it will cover entire nation. In fact, it will go across. It will go beyond the nation also. So which state should get the revenue? It's a technical question. So what section 12 of section 14 covers? See carefully. Place of supply of advertisement services to the central government, a state government, a statutory body or a local authority meant for the states or union territories identified in the contract or agreement. So whenever government takes advertisement services, agreement will be signed between the supplier of advertisement services and the government. That our advertisement should cover these states or these union territories. Now if elections are there in, for example, Delhi and Haryana, and election commission wants to give the advertisement in the newspaper. Then they would like to cover only those newspapers which will be distributed in Delhi and Haryana because in other states there are not the elections. So government doesn't want to waste the money. So they will cover only Delhi and Haryana. So Delhi and Haryana becomes the place of supply. Depending upon the value, how much value will go to Delhi and how much value of advertisement will go to Haryana. That is why it is mentioned that The place of supply shall be taken as being in each of such states or union territories which are mentioned in the agreement between the supplier of advertisement service and the recipient. And who is the recipient? Government. Government is the recipient. Supplier is any agency which is giving advertisement services. So whatever is the agreement signed between the supplier and the government and whatever states or union territories are mentioned, all those states or UTs becomes the place of supply. Now, how you divide the revenue? That is the question. And for this, the next point says that this is how you divide the value. The value of such supplies specific to each state or UT shall be in proportion to the amount attributable to services provided by way of dissemination in the respective states or UTs as may be determined as per the contract. The contract. For example, government is taking advertisement services for Haryana and Delhi. In the contract, they will mention that 40% of our advertisement should be shown in Haryana and 60% of our advertisement should be shown in Delhi. 40% Haryana, 60 Delhi. On this proportion, at this proportion, the value will be divided. 
and in case nothing is mentioned in the agreement for example agreement is silent agreement doesn't say that how much percentage should go to haryana how much percentage should go to delhi then government has given some rules and government has given some rules as it is mentioned that in the absence of such contract or agreement or on such basis as may be prescribed so there are some rules which are not in our course so i'm not going to discuss that this is what my advertisement services again listen when our advertisement services are supplied to uh, wait a second now whenever the advertisement services are given to the government state government central government statutory uh, authority local authorities doesn't matter advertisement of government normally doesn't go to one state only it can cover different states and different union territories so every state would have asked for revenue on those services so what is the exact procedure in that case the rule says that agreement must have been signed between the government and the supplier of advertisement services to the government if in that agreement it is mentioned clearly that which states are chosen for advertisement then all those states or duties will become place of supply now the question is how the value should be distributed how the revenue should be distributed then also government says in the agreement if it is mentioned in what ratio the advertisement will be distributed in the same ratio gst will be divided amongst different states or duties and if agreement doesn't talk about distribution then we will tell you how to distribute the amount and that distribution how to distribute is not in our course so i'm not going to touch that portion when agreement is silent about distribution that portion is not in our course so that is simply what you should learn about advertisement services to the government for your level i hope the point is clear if yes please raise your hand if not please ask the is the advertisement clear is this clear to everyone okay and let me discuss my next uh, next portion and last portion residuary case after this my section 12 will be over and we will end the discussion for today now let me discuss with you my last sub section sub section 2 of section 12 if you remember i have discussed with you my 12 specified services which were covered in section 12 sub section 3 to section 12 sub section 14 i have covered those 12 now let me discuss my residuary section with the help of an example and then the class will be over for today so let me again share with you the act read it because you must also try to understand the act if i only start simplifying everything then you will not learn no please read it and then we will discuss please have a look at it this is what section 12 sub section 2 is please have a look it's not so tough the place of supply of services except the services specified in sub sections 3 to 14 because for sub sections 3 to 14 specified services have their own rule other than those 12 services the same rule will be applicable for all the services and services may be lakhs of services provided supplier as well as recipient location is in india close a now it depends all residuary services depends whether the recipient is registered or unregistered if registered location of recipient is the answer very simple if recipient is registered location of the recipient because whenever recipient is registered always location of recipient is the answer if recipient is unregistered then there are two situations first location or address of the recipient if it is if address on record exist 
address on record. Now I will show you another definition of address on record. If address on record doesn't exist, then of course by default suppliers location is the answer. Now let me show you this address on record. Never frame your own definition. Whenever you are reading any legal subject, first read the act and see is that definition given? If not, then you frame the open definition. Otherwise, no. So let me show you now this address on record. Now I am reading IGST Act, but this definition is given in CGST Act. So this is how you should think that when you are reading any act, first check that respective section which you are reading for any definition. If that respective section doesn't say anything, check section two of the act, two or three or four, whatever is that which gives you definitions. If that is not given in that section, read the entire act and see whether anywhere that definition is defined. If not, read other acts then, especially related acts. This is what I have done in address on record. Now address on record I am using in IGST Act section 12 subsection 2, but I didn't find the definition in sub section 12 subsection 2 of IGST Act. This that was my first uh, point. Then I went to second point in section 2 of the IGST Act. I didn't find the definition address on record. That was my point two. Then I went to read entire IGST Act and I didn't find this definition address on record. That was my point three. So then I searched for other acts and I found address on record is existing in CGST Act, which I applied. So what section two clause three of the act CGST Act says it is CGST Act. Address on record means the address of the recipient as available in the records of the supplier. This is what address on record is. That's it. So now let me start simplifying the residuary section. After this, we will end the discussion. Today's discussion. So this is my thirteenth point. You can say residuary services. In this case, so it is applicable for all remaining services not covered above. Check the recipient who the recipient is. Is the recipient registered? Or unregistered? If registered, always the place of supply is the location of recipient. If unregistered, two things. Check. Location of recipient. As per address on record, if address on record exists. Now if I say address on record, what do I mean by this? If. If location. If address on record exists. An address on record means if address on the record of supplier, if address of the recipient, so I'm simplifying the point. I'm not writing address on record because technically it is same thing. If address of the re recipient in the records of supplier exists, this is how I can write also. And location of supplier. 
respective address of the recipient. In the records of supplier does not exist. So rather I have written records of the supplier here. Why? Because just I don't want to use the word address on record. I want to simplify the point. So using the word address on record is same as saying that address in the records of the supplier. When you say address on record, that means address in the records of the supplier. Now let me assume uh, one or two examples and then this is also over. Example. So uh, can uh, I go to the previous slide ones? Yeah. So you always note down, I think. You note down these things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you, sir. Now, Mr. A, a chartered accountant, for example, a CA registered in New Delhi. Chartered accountant registered in New Delhi. He supplies the services to his client by limited. He supplies services to his client by limited. And why limit is, uh, is also registered, registered in uh, in Rajasthan, in Jaipur, Rajasthan. Can you tell me the place of supply? What is the place of supply? What is the place of supply? Rajasthan. So it should be Rajasthan. Why? Because the recipient is registered. But before giving this answer, have you checked that this service is not covered? Have you checked this that this service is not covered? Under. Section 12 3. To subsection 12 14, have you checked it or not? Have you checked it or not? Uh, I I directly uh, jump to the uh, registered part. So make sure that whenever you apply this residuary provision, everyone should make sure that whenever you apply this provision, always make sure that you have applied. Section 12 3 to section 12 14. Point clear or not? Point clear or not? Yes, sir. Now this service, I have checked that this service is not covered under earlier, so that means I have applied these points, but you should remember this in future. Always check before checking residuary, check all those 12 cases, whether my service is covered in those cases or not. Since it is not covered, then answer depends upon recipient, registered recipient, unregistered. Since registered, then location of recipient is the place of supply and the location of recipient is Rajasthan. Next example. Mr. A. A CA. Registered in New Delhi. Supplied his services to Mr. Y. An unregistered person. An unregistered person. 
and this person is of uh, Haryana. Now I am assuming that this is also residuary services. Can you tell me the place of supply? Can you tell me the place of supply? Anyone who can tell me the place of supply. Uh, assuming that the Mr. Y's address is uh, is noted in the books in the suppliers records, then it's Haryana. If it's not, then it's uh, New Delhi. Very good answer. Because answer depends upon two assumptions. Since the recipient is unregistered, then I cannot directly write any answer. I have to make another assumption. Is address. of Mr. Y available in suppliers record. If yes, then Haryana is the place of supply. If not available. Is address of Mr. Y. If if. Address of Mr. Y not available in suppliers record, then it is so, uh, supplies and suppliers address, for example, New Delhi. Yes, this is what the point is. Now, with this, I I have completed section 12, determination of place of supply of services. Now, that's all from my side. Thanks. And good night, I must say, because today it's very late.